Guess what guys, when you have your fire alarm system serviced, they should set off the sounders. Hey guys, I'm Dan Jackson and welcome to my channel, Dan's the Engineer. This is another weekly vlog and in this video, I'll be talking to you about fire alarm maintenance and specifically about taking over fire alarm systems. So I very often get messages, phone calls from potential clients who I am recommended to them by other people um, to take over their fire alarm system. It might be that they're not happy with their service that they're receiving, that usually is the case. So they come to me and say, can you come and look at our site, give us a cost and sort of go through what you can offer. Obviously more than happy to do that. Um, so I've last week was half term so schools go the work anyone who works in you know education knows that during half term the works just go mental because all the work is crammed into that short period um, throughout the whole year so um, we took over quite a few schools actually I tend to go out on site with our engineer um, to help and assist with the takeover of the systems the reason I do that is because I manage the guys I manage the fire alarm team I want to make sure that I'm aware and have knowledge of that system so when the client calls up I half know you know I, I know the site and I can relate to what they're saying I know the panel and stuff like that I mean don't get me wrong we record everything we take photos of all the equipment and do sort of like an asset list if you like but it just helps me so and it keeps me up to fresh with um, you know what's going on on site and checking it our guys are doing it properly as well so it's you know sort of quality management as well so went to this one particular site it was a historical property um, really really nice property and they've been maintained for I think it's like 10 years or so by a very well-known national contractor and um, so they said that they're just not happy with the service they it takes ages for them to get hold of them they end up calling the intruder alarm company who have knowledge on fire alarms to ask technical questions and uh, you know they're just not getting the service they they require basically or, or what they think they're paying for so I give them a cost and they did say to me look um, we've done our due diligence and we're happy to use you but I must say you're double the cost of the previous company so I said to them that doesn't surprise me if I'm completely honest I hear it quite often um, quite often take over this particular company's fire alarms so doesn't surprise me but I sort of give a list of what we do offer in terms of service what we do um, the well it's basically the service level agreement um, so you know we have quite a close team we don't send any old engineer to the site we make sure there's a bit of a relationship between engineer me and the client um, again like I said I have knowledge of the site so when they call up I'm, I'm half knowingly you know what I'm talking about because I can relate to the site so you know we turn up when we say we're going to turn up we give them um, you know we'll call them when we're on route and you know we just like to think that we give a good customer service and at the same time that's why we were recommended so went to site and I actually took over the fire alarm system um, I was there myself like I said and it's quite it's quite an eye-opener for the client if I'm honest so the first thing I did was ask for any paperwork so they give me um, some bits of service reports if you like absolute rubbish if I'm honest sort of handwritten hard to read um, I couldn't really understand many of them so I was like okay whatever but I'm more interested in um, is there any install documents there wasn't any installation documents design or whatever so I'm I'm maintaining a system that I don't know the design I don't know the purpose so we can make a few assumptions but I have to say that to the client so um, look through the paperwork so I first thing I done was I, I walk around and I make sure that I note down all the detectors all the sounders every, you know all different parts of the system so we've got like I said an asset list of what is there and that helps us for maintenance it helps prove that we're testing what we're doing as well because we can just tick them to say yep tested 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 and one of the first items on the list was seller detector so I said to them um, I, I'm walking around this building, whereabouts is the cellar? And it's like, oh, you've got to go in the cellar. I'm like, oh yeah, because the, the paperwork is saying that there's a detector in the cellar, unless it's wrong, 
but let's have a look. She said, oh yeah, there is a cellar, but no one has ever been down it for years and years and years. I was like, okay, they should have done because there's a smoke detector down it, allegedly, according to the paperwork. So I went down there, Cobweb City, literally walked down this sort of tiny little gap to get down into the cellar and just mouthful of cobwebs, spiders everywhere, you name it. So someone clearly hadn't been down there and the state of the detector, I changed it there and then um, just because it was, it, oh, it was contaminated, it was ridiculous, it, it was damp as well. Um, it's just it's just age and hasn't been touched basically. And I'm quite shocked that the panel hasn't sort of picked up an issue. But anyway, so that was um, the first concerning thing. So um, do sort of an asset list, uh, make any notes as I go, like for example, if there's detectors too close to walls or if there isn't detection in rooms and stuff like that. Then I said to the client that um, this is a historical property open to the public, but they're closed on this particular day. That's why we're doing it on, on that day. Um, sort of makes sense, but there's still staff on site. So I said, I'm gonna have to set off the fire alarm um, so we can hear the sounders and check they're working so uh, a detector creates a fire activation and everything does what it's supposed to be doing. So they said, oh, you've got to set the sounders off. I'm like, 100% I have to set the sounders off. How do I know they're working unless I set the sounders off? So they, they said, well, the previous engineer, he never sets the sounders off. I'm like, okay, so how does he check that they're working? And they were sort of a bit miffed. So um, on this particular panel, I, I looked up um, online. I'm not massively familiar. It's quite an old panel. It must be 20 years old. I'm not massively familiar with this particular type of panel in terms of um, disabling sounders. When I was on site, no signal whatsoever. So I couldn't call up a technical help or anything like that, but not that it was a problem. But I don't think you can disable the, the sounders on this particular panel. So, um, they said that he sprays the detectors and sort of you know walks around for like an hour or so and um and then that's that but what i don't know i mean i might be looking into this too much but i i'm pretty sure you cannot disable the sound it's a sapphire system and there's no function on the back there's no little deal switch that you press that can change it um i might be wrong i granted not that it's a problem for our servicing or anything, but that would mean that they're isolating the zones. Because what you can do on this back of the panel is press a little switch and it isolates the zone, it brings up a fault, but then he's going around spraying a detector, pretending it's going off, but it actually isn't because they're not hearing the sounders go off. So that was sort of another concern about this. And it, it, you know the place clearly hadn't been maintained. Like the amount of detectors that were contaminated and and whatever, it, you know, it got to the point where I haven't got any more detectors on the vehicle to sort of swap them out. So anyway, I highlighted them concerns and I said, look, forget what the previous maintenance was. We come along and because it's not a big site, we're supposed to test the regulation state 100% throughout the entire year, but every six months you're supposed to test at least one zone or circuit or whatever, at least one device on that particular circuit or zone. So for example, we had, I believe it was like five zones. We're supposed to test at least one every six months. So what some companies do is do 50% on one visit, 50% on the other. That's okay, you're providing that they do test at least one detector on each zone. There's no point just testing zone one, zone two, and half of zone three, and then not doing the others. You have to test one of each. So we kind of stagger it out and stuff like that. But on smaller sites, because there wasn't many detectors on this site, probably about, I don't know, 30 odd. I tested 100% because it was a takeover. Um, but moving forward, we'll attempt to test 30 of the devices every single time. Now we don't have to, there might be access um, problems or, or whatever in the future, but we do bit by bit. We just try and go above and beyond because I just think that um, one year to not know that a detector is working is quite a long time so we just try you know on bigger systems a little bit different because um you know we maintain some systems which are 1500 devices and it's it's you can't do 100 percent every single time so um you know we 
strict we stick strictly more to the standards as such but on smaller systems there's, there's no reason why you can't it really doesn't take long so on the on the takeover test 100 percent of the devices make sure all the sounders are sounding and that's why i want to hear them going off as well and also i want the client and the people of the building get to understand um, the sound of the fire alarm as well I, I know it sounds crazy i also make sure that they're doing their weekly test um you may have seen my weekly test video i'll put a, a link above um, to that video that's a very popular video that i send to a lot of people i make sure they're doing a weekly test so they know what they're doing so basically whiz round doing a detector testing um i use i've either got a testy fire um, been using this actually um, the guys uh, gave it to me uh, as a little trial because I've not really used the, uh, the testify before we mainly use the solo ranges but we also have solo 365 so I've got one of those as well they'll do a good job I've done a video on this um, tester I've also done a video on the solo 365 so I'll put um, links above as well for that so go around make sure everything works some things didn't, so obviously highlight that and we've got to swap them out and, and resolve those issues. But also, what I'm doing is making sure that there's detection where it should be. And detectors aren't too close to walls, like I've said before, too close to beams um, and things like that in the wrong environment. So in this particular property, bear in mind, I don't know the design. Um, I would assume looking at it, it's an, an L2. Now, it's, it's public for public use. It's also offices, so members of staff work there, and also it's got living accommodation. So it's a, it's a big mixture, a big mixture. Now, one thing I noted that um, there weren't sounders in um, a certain few sleeping areas. So you're never gonna, uh, there's this sort of argument, does it come under part six or part one? Either way, these sounders weren't located where they should be. So, you know, the, the audible readings wouldn't, wouldn't have been good enough um, so in sleeping areas so highlighted that to them and they were quite shocked that it hadn't been highlighted before but I'll get into that in a minute I also, also noticed there was a corridor now this corridor it wasn't massive you know it's about one meter wide and about three meters long but it's a corridor now off that corridor you've got a boiler cupboard and a bathroom at the other end or oh, there's three three parts to it so that's one end you've got stairs a door and then stairs going up to sleeping accommodation which is the main bedroom and then you've also got um it joins onto another corridor which is the escape route so this corridor is part of the escape route there's no detection in there at all now um i sort of pointed this out and they said um why would we need detection there because there's detection before and after i said yeah that's okay but there's also a boiler cupboard and there's 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 a because it's the bathroom there's a toilet um a towel cupboard as well in there um you've got you know you just don't know i mean they say they're not allowed to light candles um in the premises but it you know in a few it doesn't stop people doing it i suppose just because there's that sort of policy they could have candles in the bath you name it so i would rather see if i was designing a system i would rather see that that's on the escape route there should be a detector there because ultimately there could be a fire and there's um there's light fittings and there's um there's a socket and a spur for something so you know there could be a fire in that tiny little corridor they could be asleep upstairs or a fire could have spread from the boiler room, boiler cupboard or whatever, and they, you know, by then it's too late. Bear in mind also, sounders weren't good enough um, in the sleeping accommodation. So, you know, if there was a fire, it could be a massive issue. Now, um, I won't go too much into it, but obviously, you know, I said, is your, is your fire compartment um, and fire barriers up to scratch? And they said, yeah, they're looking into that. So, you know, they're trying for that. But these sort of little things, the first thing here is that the detection isn't adequate in my eyes because it's not in the right places. So when I sort of sat down and sort of told them that, they sort of said, why didn't the previous company tell us this? And I said, I, I can't answer on their behalf, but I think it's important for me I think I have a duty, if I notice something that I think is unsafe, even if it's not something to do with my fire alarm service as such, um, because ultimately a fire alarm service is about checking if the system functions um, to its design as such. You're not verifying the design, but you're checking that it's working. Now, I don't have that document, so I've got to make assumptions. But however, I have, I have sort of noted certain things that um, should be made aware 
to the client because if a fire occurred, there could be shortfalls like the corridor, like the sounders. Um, there's also they there's a, a sort of an outbuilding that they let out as a holiday um, let in place, and the sounders weren't working there either. I mean, they they probably wouldn't have been aware of that. They that may have happened that week. Who knows? But you know that was an issue. And also there were certain other areas where there weren't sounders or detection or manual call points as well. So highlighted all these things to them and you know straight away they're asking for a quote and they want us to go ahead and do work and you know it's quite a lot of work as well um, and it's, it's not a cheap amount but when I sat down and explained the consequence if a fire occurred they they were quite shocked that they haven't hadn't been highlighted this before um, and they said you know it comes under our fire risk assessment and I said that's very well but a fire risk assessor isn't there to tell you if your fire alarm system is up to scratch or not that's your, that's your maintenance provider which I haven't been doing and it was you know it's just silly little things like um, uh, BS5839 part 1 2017 it's just updated you know there's things like call points have to have covers on them now they go on and emphasize about it's not retrospective so this install was done prior to 2017 so they don't need call point covers and you shouldn't be highlighting it or whatever during the service but i feel it is a duty also to mention that um the call points um haven't got covers we, we note it down but more of a sort of an observation and it's down to the client i actually find most clients say oh well that's actually a better idea let's put let's get some covers because you can get most covers for call points depending on age sort of thing but if it's like you know all your modern sort of stuff it's it's absolutely fine they just clip on and they're quite low cost so you know they're happy to do that and actually i think that's better because they want their system to conform with 2017 which is not a bad thing because it, it's increased on safety and modern sort of procedures to sort of make sense. And there's things like the monitoring cable for, um, but it's actually linked with the intruder alarm. And I've got to verify if the power supplies and everything um, conform. I don't think they will do. But um, the, the mains uh, supply to the fire alarm, for example, was um, just twin and earth cabling. So it's not fire rated. And I don't think it was on a dedicated circuit either. So we're going to quote to rewire that in FP2. Or actually, it'll be um, MICC. And then um, also the intruder alarm cable is just um, alarm cable. Um, you know, it's non fire rated between the ARC uh, monitoring equipment and the fire panel and there's quite a distance in between. So um, what we prefer to see, and bear in mind that cable's not monitored either. Um, so we've got a little bit of messing around to sort of get that up to scratch as well, but it's quite important. Now we, we highlight these things to the client, we sit down and we explain them, give them to the client and it's, it's their system, it's not ours. It's down to them um, if they want to go ahead and do any actions or not, leave it up to them. But what I'm getting at with this whole sort of scenario here, guys, is that um, during a takeover or any maintenance, you should always be sort of highlighting these sort of things. You should be looking for, are new walls installed? Has detectors been moved? Um, you know, has anything changed in the building? Have they, I went to one the other day, they've cut a brand new fire exit out in the building without telling us. So it requires a call point. And you know, you should be pointing this out as the maintenance company, you should be pointing these things out to the client and making sure that you're doing everything you can so that in the event of a fire, you're absolutely maximizing um, detection and you know, the alarm and it's down to them. And when you actually explain to clients and you explain that if there was a fire was to occur, um, and this was to happen currently your system doesn't do this it doesn't do that it's got shortfalls they especially when they live there or they're in charge of you know members of the public for example and they've got a duty of care you do tend to find that they look at it a little bit differently but at the end like i see so many um maintenance companies just give a service docket and it just says smoke detectors tested five heat detectors one you know it's just like a little tick list it doesn't really say much and it, it's not a standard um, BS form anyway. Um, we've created things that are a little bit more in depth is to help us, help the client, help us quote the work, make sure you doc document everything. That's how we sort of uh, do, a, do a takeover. And from now, because we've got the information, um, it, it's quite easy for the next service visit because it, it's just a case of going along, testing devices and just doing our checks. It's really straightforward. That's what they're paying for at the end of the day. I like to think they get good value for money. So guys, thanks for watching this um, weekly vlog. 
I know I was rambling on a little bit. And guys, I'd love to hear from you. Any comments you've got, any questions, just put in the comments below. But any videos you want me to do, by all means, get in touch and let me know. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.